Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Will Valley. Some of you may know me as Camel Moon. I'm going to be doing a review of a movie that was terrible. The integrity and quality of the Ford name. Maintenance procedures, safety features. Flexibility. The built-in release makes it simple to use. You'll want to review these from time to time. After the hood is popped. If you need to change a tire. A word of caution. This rear cross piece can be adjusted to accommodate different load sizes. It's messy situations. See how simple it is? While we're here, you'll find in your glove compartments oil filler tube, things like that. The movie in question is Barbarian. It came out, I guess, I don't know, last year, maybe. I don't care. Uh, sucks. Fucking blows. So because it's a movie that is older, I have no problem doing spoilers for it. And I'm going to draw out the entire movie and, uh, you know, explain why it's terrible. The issue with this movie that I, I kind of can't stand, that seems to be like this running theme in Hollywood, you know, this, this phrase, this mindset, let's uh, subvert the audience's expectations. That's, in a nutshell, what this movie tries to do over and over and over. The problem with that is that it really just amounts to very lazy writing. And there are moments in this movie where as it progresses, you feel like they're only doing, they're only making the decisions that they're making because they are looking to surprise the audience, but they can't do it with actual clever writing. Essentially, the premise is this girl shows up at a house, right? And that's a B&B &B, and she ends up having to share it with someone. Now, if you're going in cold, you think this is essentially going to be one of these like horror bedroom drama type of things where it's just two people in a house for two hours, which for the most part, I, I kind of detest those movies, but I was like, all right, we'll give it a shot because I keep hearing good things. And then, you know, you start playing guessing games. Like there's a dude who's already there. You wonder why he's there. And like, you know, is he in on this? Is he, is he like trying to trick her? Is he going to rape her? Is he going to murder her? Whatever. And the problem is it never goes anywhere. But they set up a lot of things in the movie that make you question what his motivation is. And these really are just worthless moments in the film because they don't mean anything later on. The movie itself starts off with the the B and B getting double booked. We don't know why this is. We never find out why this is. We never hear about some company who's like trying to lure people into their house. But we have no idea, and it's never resolved. It, it never ever fucking comes up again. There's a a scene where she gets a hold of his license to I presume so that she can, you know, look on Google or whatever. Well, we never see that, which makes the scene of her taking a picture of the license worthless. So essentially what happens is the next day she wakes up and she goes to a job interview. And then, you know, there's another scene there where she tells the person interviewing her, oh, I'm staying in this bad neighborhood. And the woman that's interviewing her, it's almost like she knows that there's something weird about it. And she's like, oh, you shouldn't be staying there. Well, this is never approached again. We don't know why it's bad for her to stay there. We don't, you know, there, there's no payoff for a moment like that. Um, it's just supposed to add to the, the mystery of this neighborhood. But it, as the movie progresses, you find out that that's not anything that you would keep secret. So the fact that the this woman, you know, the, this boss lady doesn't say anything is it's again it's just it's it's sloppy so the main character's name is tess after her interview she goes back to this house where she runs out of toilet paper so she goes downstairs into the basement where there's a bunch of toilet paper the door closes in on her and she's trapped down there and then out of pure curiosity she finds a magic hidden door in the wall somewhere and decides to go look in there. And then she finds like one of these rape dungeons. You know, it's all creepy and she gets freaked out. She's like, I got it. I got to bounce. 
but she can't get out because she she's locked in the basement. So the dude shows up and, you know, he has to break her out of the basement. So she's freaked out and she wants to leave and she's just about to go out the door. And he's like, no, 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 don't, don't go. I need to go look at this first. Again, this is another one of these incredibly stupid pieces of writing because nobody would do that. She would say, look, if you need to go downstairs, go downstairs. I'm going to go wait in the car. In fact, this movie could, I mean, you could, you could just call this movie, I'm going to go make the wrong decision for two hours. It's, it's so prevalent because there's nothing about it that is particularly well written. And it keeps trying to set up that this guy is, like, going to try to get her in that dungeon. If there was ever any doubt, ever, that this guy might not be what it is, him luring her down here at this moment would be the most opportune moment to do that. So why she would stay in the house is fucking stupid. It's so fucking stupid. So he goes downstairs. Suddenly, she can't hear him anymore. And he's like, oh, uh, uh, what, what, what's her name? Uh, Tess? She, she's like, hello, hello. Then she goes downstairs again and can't find them. Then she opens the door. There's another fucking, another, a secret door behind the secret door. And there's a staircase to hell or something. And, oh my God. And she goes down there and the, the guy um, is running around. And he's like, oh my god, we gotta go. There's something down here. And there's like some big fucking beast woman who comes over and smashes his head in the wall. <laughs> so now we do uh, a hard cut. And it's like, I guess it's a new act at this point. Justin Long is in a Porsche. Right? He's dry. God, he is not aged well and he's driving down you know, some fucking california street and he gets a call and in the call it's like oh uh, you you've uh there's a rape charge against you. He's, he's a movie star or something a, a girl that was on a set with you says that you raped her so we now we go through this whole fucking acrobatic nonsense of his entire, like, you know, I don't know, four or five days. Nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with the movie. Nothing to do with the plot. It, they literally spend 20 minutes going over what will essentially be his motivation to go into the house. But we never got that with the earlier character. I mean, you kind of do. But you don't get, like, a real-time version. You just It's just spoken of. Like, oh, I'm here to make a documentary. That's it. But for whatever reason, Justin Long, who now in the second act shows up and gets the, the treatment of being the, the focus character, gets all of this backstory and motivation that me means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So he eventually, he goes to the house because it turns out he's the owner. And he needs to liquidate funds so that he can pay for his lawyer because he needs to fight these rape charges. A lot of there's a lot of rape in this movie. There's a lot of like subtext of rape. So he goes to the house. It is a moment of levity, which is nice. So I would award it points there. You know, because he goes into the house and he's like, oh, well, I'm gonna like measure the house out, right? And he gets his uh, tape measure. He's gonna like change out how many rooms are in the in the place and he's gonna you know potentially sell it so he goes um into the basement and then he finds the secret secret door and he goes down there and he gets freaked out and he falls into like a dungeon uh that was put there by the the big I don't know. She's like a monster woman. And in the dungeon is this woman, Tess. We find out that that's what happened to her. And she's like, you got... And, and also, we have no idea time relation, how much time is going by. You kind of get this assumption, maybe a couple of days or a week or a month or... I, you don't really know. But, like, Tess's car is still in front of the house. And so, you know, Justin Long sees it. And he's like, oh, I guess there were... He thinks there's squatters there. Because squatters drive... Honda 
Honda SUVs, apparently. And uh, he, he ends up finding Tess, right? So they're in the dungeon together, and she's te- like trying to tell him, like, okay, you got to get with the program because this monster woman thing, she, she, she thinks we're her babies. Eventually, they they break out, and now there, at one point there's another cut, and this is another flashback. So this is a flashback, I assume, to something like the '80s. And you find that the guy who ran, who owned the house, the original owner, was like a crazy serial rapist murderer guy. Um, he'd go into people's houses, unlock the windows, and I assume come get him at night and drag him back to his rape dungeon. And you know, and then he has all these videotapes of it. And it's it's fine because it you know it seems to try to explain what's happening, but it doesn't actually explain really anything. Because there's so much extra stuff going on, like a dungeon beneath the dungeon beneath the dungeon that clearly looks like it was worked on by coal miners or something. Like, there's no way to build this by yourself. I mean, and this is like an elaborate maze of tunnels. We have no idea how it ever got built. But I guess we just presume that he did it himself. So, he, and, and this is what the whole... This is the whole backstory, right? It's, it's this, this guy... And he, he, he built this place and, you know, this is where he drags his ladies. Then we cut back to the future, back to, you know, present day. And Justin Long finds him in this labyrinth under the house. And he's, uh, you know, he's old and decrepit. And he uh, kills himself, this guy, this old guy. He, he takes a revolver and blows his brains out. So Justin Long takes the gun and uses it, or at least thinks he's using it, to try to get out. So while Justin Long is running around down in the house, Tess actually escapes. This is one of the dumbest parts of the entire movie. She she walks, we don't even know how many miles, to a gas station, where she uses a phone, and she calls the cops. And you're like, okay, great. Like, some type of reality is setting in. And the police show up, And she looks like shit, and she's saying that there's a guy kidnapped in a basement. And the cops bring her back to the house. The house which is in the middle of nowhere. And they say, we don't believe you, and drive away. I mean, if that was, like, the movie is like a fantasy. It might as well take place in space. Because this is not how people work. This is not how things happen. Like, if, you, if you're gonna use the police, then use the police. Like, it would have been just as effective. It would have been more effective if she couldn't get in touch with the police and instead had from some yokel, right, in a pickup or something, be like, well, I don't believe you, little miss, and then drive off. Then you could be like, oh, wow, she really got fucked. But the fucking police, like, if they saw a woman who claimed that there was a rape dungeon and someone else was kidnapped and looked like shit and cuts and bruises all over, first thing they do is bring her to a hospital. And then they would, you know, they'd have a bunch of cops come in and interview her while she's, you know, hooked up to IVs and shit. They wouldn't bring her back to the... Oh, it's so fucking dumb. So they leave. And now she's right in the middle of where she was before. And... She, at the last second, decides, all right, I'm going to break back into the house, get my keys, get in the car, and drive the fuck out of here. (laughs) So she does that. And then she, she thinks, oh, I have to, you know what? I'm a good person. What a great, like, the cops don't believe me, or whatever. So I'm going to go back into the house now in the middle of the night, and I'm going to save Justin Long. Oh, God, it's so, it's so dumb. So, at this point, Justin Long has a gun, and he just hears a, a scrambling sound, and it turns out it's Tess looking for him, and he shoots her. And the problem with him shooting her is it doesn't even amount to anything. Again, this is one of these things, like, we're going to subvert your expectations. You thought that that was the end of the movie. No, there's another tw- fucking 25 minutes of this bullshit. So they get out, and they're like, oh, shit, we got to get the fuck out of here. 
and he drags her out of the house and they get up, uh, you know, they get up topside and there's, there's this, this guy, this like random homeless guy who tells them like, oh, you need to come stay with me because the, the crazy bitch, you know, who lives in the basement, she's going to come looking for you. So he brings them to like a water tower or something. And again, this is like Detroit. So it's like, oh, fucking house. everything sucks, right? All the houses are run down except for this one, you know, canary yellow house right in the middle of it all. Because that makes a lot of sense. And also, it doesn't, oh God, it doesn't make any fucking sense. If, if they live in the basement, why is there upkeep in the house? So they're hanging out with this homeless guy. And the homeless guy is like, oh, we got to get you out of here. And, you know, I've seen you've been shot. We got to lay low for the night. And they're like, well, what if she comes after us? And I swear to God, it's like they're just, they don't, they don't, I, they don't know how to make movies anymore. And he goes, in the 15 years I've lived here, no one's ever broken in here. Fucking seconds. She breaks in and strangles him and rips his arms off. And it was just, it's so bereft of any real writing capability or creativity. You know, as he's saying it, the trope that they're about to unfold. How do you know she can't get in here? Shit, I've been living in this place more than 15 years, and she ain't never came in this motherfucker. It's, it's beyond, like, see, the thing is, here's the thing. Good writing has to be clever. If, if they want to, say, subvert your expectations, that's them going in the complete opposite direction. That's them saying, I want to be clever, but I'm not a good writer. That's them being like, look, um, we'll just take all the tropes you know, and we'll kind of like spin them a little bit, but nothing will actually make sense in the grand scheme of things because that's too hard. You know, the, pay, the, the, the setup, payoff, um, construction of script writing does not exist anymore this this felt like a movie written by 25 year olds for for 25 year olds so this this anyway back to the plot this uh big bertha bitch you know she's chasing them and she chases them up a water tower now at one point tess says why don't you shoot her justin long says oh yeah he forgot he had a gu- he forgot he had a fucking revolver on him. I don't know how you forget that. I mean, especially when it was such an integral part of the plot not 5 minutes earlier. He literally says, "Oh yeah," and pulls it out, fumbles it, and it falls off the water tower. So, out of complete self-preservation, he takes Tess, throws her off the water tower. So that Bertha jumps after her. Because Bertha thinks that Tess is her baby. So Bertha, you know, wraps her arms around her. And they they hit the concrete together. And you think they're both dead. Justin Long goes down there. And he's like, oh, oh, Tess, you're still alive. Tess, like, gets up. Then Bertha gets up. Shoves her fucking fingers through Justin Long's head. And then rips his head off. And, And Tess takes the revolver that's now in the gun. And shoots Bertha point blank in the head. And then it's a smash cut to black with, you know, campy, you know, it's, it's some, it's some classic song. I can't remember the song and title, title credits directed by go fuck yourself. Get the fuck out of here. This, this is the the height of lazy garbage wannabe writing. These are the kind of decisions that you make when you have no fucking idea what you're doing. It, It made me so angry that someone actually got funding to put this shit together. It's not clever. It's not smart. It's it's actually the complete opposite of all of those things. If you like this movie, you fucking checked your brain at the door at birth. It's, it's so stupid that the entire time you're watching it, there's just, there, it just keeps going. Like, it's like, it's like a nine-year-old telling a story. And then, and then, and then, and nothing fucking connects. And, and this is, this is, uh, now this is common. We're seeing more and more of this. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons that movies like this are getting made. I mean, one of them is because I would presume that the people behind the scenes 
have completely failed upwards in life um you know whether it's some type of uh mommy and daddy were in the film industry or you know i got to go to ucla or whatever it is and so they're put to the front of the line or there are actually talented people out there but the people who fund them are complete brain dead retarded morons uh, and, you know, they say like, oh, well, how about we do this? Or how about we do that? I can get Justin Long on here. You know, he was in Tusk. The, the annoying thing, too, is that, like, you look at ratings of this thing. You know, Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 92%. No. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's cringy, actually. Because as you watch it and you realize more and more that this is not what you expect it to be. It just keeps raising more and more questions. See, it's it's good in a movie to have questions, but it's only good if you decide to answer them. If you're not going to answer any of them, and you're just going to, like, you know, answer questions with more questions, that's bad writing. Now, you want to answer questions with a story. That's good writing. If you say, I'm not going to answer any of your questions, or I'm going to completely ignore the basics of storytelling so that I can try to surprise you that it's not a story that holds up. There are certain movies that can subvert expectations to varying levels of uh, success uh, that do it, that know what they're doing. Uh, um, From Dust Till Dawn, right? From Dust Till Dawn works because it doesn't keep bringing you down a rabbit hole. It, it stops at one point and and has the question of holy shit wouldn't this be fucking crazy if you if you thought you were doing this and then this is what happened but then you realize that it's still structured like a basic movie it still has the first I don't know 30 minutes where they're all you getting to know the characters and they're they're trying to cross the border they're all in that that mobile home or whatever it is and you 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 see what the stakes are early on. That's another thing about Barbarian. There's no stakes. You don't really know anything except don't go in the house. And the problem with that is is that like, well, I know as an audience member it's probably not good, but that you never you're never giving me enough to feel like oh that part of the story is answered and we can move on to the next. It's like the shiny quarter trick. Every time you think that you've got it, it disappears, and there's a new one behind your ear. And it's like, yeah, okay, but you still have to... You st- if you're going to take me on this journey, you need to figure out what the answer is before you decide to ask new questions. Early on in the movie, there's this assumption that it's a supernatural house. Doors opening by themselves, there's weird screeching sounds, you know, all, you know the... The, the guy, I can't remember the guy's name, um, you know, who's sharing the B&B with her. He's having these, like, horrific nightmares. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, there's, like, the, ha- the house is haunted. Well, none of that makes a fucking, sh- n- no difference whatsoever. And so why would you spend the time setting that up if you never, ever plan on delivering on any aspect of it? And if you want to say it's, well, oh, it's because this Bertha character was, like, in the house, like, looking at him. Well, then why not just fucking drag him down to the dungeon basement at that point? Why do you gotta wait for them to find it? What if they don't find it? It's, I'm telling you, it, it, it feels like it was written by a 14-year-old. It's, it's inane to think that movies like this are being made, because... There are so many other better ways to do the same story. So that's it. Fuck this shit.